The story you're about to see is a parent's nightmare, the story of a family whose daughter disappeared. When they finally found her, they had to fight just to get to talk with her because she had joined a cult. In this case, it was the so-called Moonies, followers of the Reverend Sun Young Moon, head of the Unification Church, who became well-known in the early 80s for his mass wedding ceremonies. We were approached by this family during the summer. They agreed to allow us to document their search, hoping that doing so would speed things up or at the very least, help other families. Here now is their agonizing story. For a very long time, I didn't even know where my daughter was. Um, I've never had that situation in my life, to not even be able to imagine in my mind what she was doing. 18-year-old Catherine disappeared just after finishing her freshman year in college. Catherine, Jonathan would just like you to come down. Catherine, and please, I just want to say hi. It took two months for the family to come this close. I love you so much. I can't leave here knowing that I could have just given my sister a hug. Still not close enough to hug. Their story began when they got this letter back home in California. Mom, I'm writing to tell you that I'm going to be traveling around the country to work with alcohol and drug addicted people. I can no longer be reached by phone, but you can write to me. From this dorm room at NYU, the last place Catherine stayed, their search begins. The next two weeks, they live with beepers and cellular phones, talking with police and lawyers, private eyes, and social workers. From them, they learned that this address Catherine used belongs to the Moonies. When I first found out, I just screamed. A whole night, I screamed. And then I realized that what I had to do was, was get busy. Very busy. It became her life's work. The unfortunate thing is, this is a group, you just can't go up and say, hey, I want to talk to my daughter. Right. Catherine's mother, Cynthia, and Catherine's 16-year-old brother, Jonathan, put together a team of family and friends with counselors who are all former cult members. Could we ask her to come and bring one friend? No, you ask her to come, period. See, she hasn't told you she's with the Moonies. Catherine's 80-year-old grandmother wants to know why the police cannot go in and bring out her granddaughter. Why can't America somehow um, put its foot down on it? We have freedom of religion and everyone has the right to believe anything they want to believe. And they're advised that legally they cannot hold Catherine against her will. And if the person is detained in any way, that not only will we leave, but we will notify the authorities. It's going to be difficult. It's a delicate, delicate, it's a, you're going to get an Academy Award when you're done. The I don't unfortunate want an Academy Award. I just want my daughter. <laughs> the strategy they decide on, mother and brother, aunt and uncle, go to the house on Long Island where Catherine has been living with 16 other Moonies. Oh, hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm here to see my daughter, Catherine. We know she's, she's staying here. We want to see her now. Well, the thing is, um, I don't know what makes you come here, but this is a uh, private house. They know Catherine's been living here. They know because two other recruits who just defected told them she was. We need to see my daughter. And we need to see something. I'm sorry, she's not here. Okay. I'm sorry, she's not here. It's no problem. Can you come back tomorrow? No, we cannot come back tomorrow. Well, maybe you can give us a phone call. I mean, no, we're staying here. We're here. We're here. No, we're, we're right here now. We're not leaving. You're talking to a desperate family here, desperate parents. Just like the way you're Yes, I don't understand right, why you can't. If you want to wait, you know, yes, I'm not sure it might take till tomorrow if that's what you want to do. Well, you can. After several hours of negotiating, the family asks if they can check Catherine's room to see if her personal belongings are still here. But you're not prepared to, to let Catherine's mother go in and to see for herself? You can't do that. Well, if, you, anyone if ever, you can't if prove not, to us she's not here, then why should we leave under the exactly. assumption she's not here? Has anyone exactly. ever... Because you have no right to be here. Catherine, we have every... We have... Right have no. Oh, my... <laughs> Right. You talk about it. Is how I need you and how you needed me too. As night falls, they sing songs they sang together as a family, hoping Catherine will hear and come outside. Now I know the woman that you are. You're wonderful so far and it's more than I hope for. It has been nine hours and still no sign of Catherine. Exhausted, they leave, deciding they have no choice but to go to the top, to Belvedere, the Westchester County estate of the Reverend Sun Young Moon. Overnight, Catherine's stepfather has flown in. We've come a long way. We're looking for our daughter. 
and we have reason to believe that she's with the Unification Church. Whatever your daughter is doing, it's of her own free will and volition. If you don't leave now, I'm going to call, I'm gonna have to ask him, well, you're trespassing. Okay, I'll give Fine, you a point. Fine, get him bring him down. We'll be happy to talk with him. Within minutes, the local police arrive. Officer, here's the problem. Our 18-year-old daughter... The guard interrupts, insisting calls were made to the family. They're yes, worried about the daughter. Working. Okay, sir, I okay. told them. They have a headquarters. Yeah, they know the phone. we call that person from here? have a headquarters. Yes, we call that person from here. you can't use here. my phone. All right, we've got a phone. We've got a cellular phone. We'll do it. We need that phone number. Cynthia calls her hotel to check for messages. There are none. Then she calls Mooney headquarters. She's told that no one's there who can speak to her. While she calls, the police convince the guard to call someone in authority. So we should show up there at what time? We should show up there. At 6 o'clock. At 6 o'clock. Uh-huh. Great. Great. Hi. We're here to see Kathy. Your mom, right? Okay. And this is NBC? The Moonies call this Columbia House because it's close to the university. She wants to see the media first. The media can come in. Come we, in. we don't want the news to come in. If they're out well, here... First, first the, the media can come in, and then what Catherine wants, her decision is that she wants the media to come in, she'll talk to the media, and then after that, after she talks to the media, she'll okay. let the media out, and then you guys can come in and talk with them. Come on in and get, get your story. Okay. Our producer and camera crew are ushered into a once elegant brownstone on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. Catherine is waiting. You must be Catherine. But it's clear it was not her decision to speak to the media. Well, what are we here to talk about? I mean, well, after you take your few pictures, is it possible I could talk to Catherine alone? I don't think so. Why not? Well, we may have to Catherine. I don't know what she said. Well, it's all, I mean, it's, it's all right with me. Then they accuse our crew of being with the Cult Awareness Network, not really journalists. They're very afraid of um, attacks upon Reverend Moon. As, as you probably know, the media repeatedly in the past have, have spread a lot of rumors about Reverend Moon, have, have attacked him about many, many moral issues and ethical issues, and um, which, which, as far as I'm, I'm concerned, are really not true in terms of this um, idea that, that he, there's a brainwashing process going on. You know, no one, no one has really made me do anything or made me believe anything. Well, do you feel comfortable, for example, if I said to you, Catherine, we'd love to go talk to you in the restaurant on the street. Would you come with us? No way. Why not? No way. You don't feel comfortable to walk out the door and just take a walk? No, absolutely not. Would you be willing to meet with your brother? No, not at this point. Not at this point. Really, I don't want to get emotionally involved about it, you know? You're not interested in reestablishing family contact? Well, my, my mother's here. I mean, this is, this is family contact, you know. Minutes later, they allow Catherine's mother inside. The long search was over. She said, well, maybe Sunday I'll be able to walk out with you. Maybe Sunday. And uh, it wasn't as if I was dealing with Catherine at all. Of course I cried. Of course it was sad. But, but it was like a stranger. It's, it was like Catherine wasn't there at all. Uh, Catherine, I love you. I just want to see you. Because I don't know when I'll see you next, and I want you to explain to me so that I can know for myself why you can't see me. And no matter what's going on, I love you, and I'd like to talk with you for a minute. No matter what's going on, I love you too, and I cannot see you right now. There was a flurry of phone calls between Catherine and her family after this meeting, then nothing. Her family has no idea where she is and hasn't spoken with her for two months. Kirsten Reed is a young woman who broke away from that cult just a year ago. Kirsten, good morning. How were you recruited in the first place? Um, two girls kind of nervously approached me in San Francisco and mentioned nothing about Moon, just said they were students in a student group. Um, talked to me about ideology and asked me if I shared the same sort of the world should get along kind of philosophies and said they would have tea and coffee upstairs. They were right in front of their building. Um, and then they eventually said they had a weekend program, like a youth hostel. Would I like to go? Mm -hmm. And you said yes? Eventually, I said yes. And then what happened after that? Um, they put me in lots of lectures and um, a rigorous schedule where I never had any time to myself. And um, 
eventually it came out um, that we were supposed to worship Reverend Moon and slowly after really getting us to buy all of their philosophies. What about this whole concept of brainwashing, Kirsten? Did you feel like that was going on? Um, not while I was there. I know I felt strange and I, I kind of lost my self-will to do anything outside of what, what we were doing because no one ever initiates their own actions there. Mm -hmm. You became and very dependent on the people leading the group? Yeah. Hmm. Did they ever encourage you to contact your family? Um, not at all. Um, Did they discourage you? Definitely. They think that, or they make people believe that the outside world is ignorant and they're enlightened, so the outside world doesn't understand them and will ostracize whoever's in the cult. Why did you finally leave? Um, my family figured out where I was based on a small phone call, and um, my grandmother, family friend, showed up, and um, they wouldn't let me leave with them until I promised I wouldn't, but I decided I would anyway. And you had been there only about a month at that yeah. point? All right, Kristen Reed, thanks so much for talking with us this morning. Thank you. Ahead in our next half hour, we'll hear from a spokesman for the Unification Church. And we're back in a moment right after this. In our last half hour, we brought you the story of one family's efforts to contact a daughter who has joined the Unification Church, the so-called Moonies. Here now is Dr. James Boffman, President of the Unification Church of America, and Stephen Hassan, an expert on cult and mind control. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Dr. Rachel. Boffman, I understand that you don't like to be called Moonies. Well, we put out a statement a couple of years ago saying that uh, Moonies have been, the word has been used in, in a pejorative, derogatory sense, and we've asked that the public not use it. What would you prefer to be called? Uh, members of the Unification Church. Uh, we feel that it's the same uh, tone that people use in using other derogatory terms towards different races and nationalities. And you don't so, like to be called a cult either, is that right? Well, of course not. The, I'm a social scientist, and the word cult has social scientific and theological meaning in its proper sense, but it has been used in a very negative sense to suggest uh, dangerous, destructive uh, organizations which brainwash and uh, commit mind Yes, control. I believe that the unification movement is a dangerous, destructive cult, a pyramid-structured group with a man at the top who claims to be the Messiah, greater than any spiritual leader in history, not unlike David Koresh or Jim Jones, that uses deception and recruitment and I systematic about mind issue, though, control right? techniques to undermine people's ability to think critically and to make people dependent on the group. And well, what I saw in the videotape was characteristic of what hundreds of other families have experienced yeah. desperately yeah. trying to find their, to their the loved issue, ones. Well, this the is the issue. Let's talk about the situation with Catherine, sure. the story okay. we saw in our yeah. last half hour. I know that Catherine's family desperately wants to be with her. They want to see her, spend some time with her outside the, the, the unification structure, outside the home where mm -hmm. she's staying. If she's still a sane there, I guess they don't know at this point. Are you going to speak with some church members and see if that can be arranged? Because for many people in this country, they feel that religion and family sort of goes hand in hand. Yeah, that's true. I, let me just say that the Unification Church does not have a policy or a practice, and never did, of breaking up families. This is uh, a myth I designed... Totally disagree. Let him finish this is a myth there. designed by our detractors, such as Steve Hansen, and, and they try to promote this myth uh, for various reasons, as I may mm -hmm. explain later. But actually, it's just the opposite. We're very concerned about... Uh, values in marriage and family and relationships. Most of our members live in their home states, their native communities, they have families of their own, and are in pretty cordial relationships with their parents. But the example we saw in our well, this is one example. certainly would undermine... Sure, that's right. Let saying. me explain about this example, because this just again promotes a mythical image of, uh, of a situation that is not uh, indicative of, uh, of our church. Well, let me Ka just Catherine's, break in and Catherine's say that parents. I was a member wait, wait, in... Wait, two seconds. Go ahead and finish, Ka but Kath fairly quickly, yes, please. Yes, Catherine's parents uh, acted in, in very extreme <coughs> ways, which caused her to be concerned about what would happen to her. This concern is not unlike other situations that have happened in the past. The reason being, it's not Catherine's parents' fault at all. They're being used by a group called Cult Awareness Network, which uh, drums up fears of deprogramming and, and cult... Uh, mind control, which has been debunked and uh, uh, totally rejected by the social scientific community. Mr. Hassan, you don't believe that's yeah, true. Yeah, you see, 
Katie, I was involved with this organization many years ago. Twenty years ago, I spent two and a half years as a, meter, uh, a member and a leader. I personally intercepted letters from families, phone calls from families. There's no idea of individual free will in the organization. There's something where you have to submit to your central figure, get permission. Even in terms of the marriages, where Moon has the mass weddings, he'll say, you and you, and you are told when you can see your spouse, when you can have sexual relations with your spouse, usually waiting four years or more. This organization is harming people, and yet it's using millions of dollars of PR to say, hey, we're just like any other religion. They're not, and they need to be held accountable in fact, for Dr. their Bach, policies. In fact, Kirsten Reed, who was with us in our last mm -hmm. half hour, told me that the organization was extremely deceptive in how it recruited her, and it, in fact, did screen her letters phone calls, etc., and discouraged her very much from having any contact at all with her family. Well, it was also very deceptive how hidden cameras and hidden microphones were used to get a lot of that footage. Kirsten, uh, Kirsten had nothing to do no, with no, the report. No, she was the second person. I'm talking about just that deception is, is used by uh, people of Cult Awareness Network, Galen well, Kelly, the Moon security advisor. Says God tells lies, and it's okay to lie when you're recruiting okay. in a speech but in January 3rd, 1972. Master See? speaks printed by the organization. This is hearsay. You were a member. It is not. It is documented ago. by the organization. January 3rd, 1972. I think you need to get but somebody fresh. Let me ask you, you know, Dr. Buckley. I mean, you really, know, when our camera crew know. and producer, yeah. they were at. Uh, the well, they were at church site. At that one. Right. Catherine constantly had to ask permission to speak with Correct. anyone. Why is that? Why can't she of her own free will basically talk to reporters if she so chooses because or talk to her brother or mother? First of all, her relationship with her parents is her own personal responsibility. That is the way it is so with then why does the church interfere with the relationships well, with families? Because we're dealing with people who have already interfered with her family already. These no, they were of not. The Awareness they Network contacted her, drummed up these fears, and then played on the fears of the parents to extort you know, to, in, to invite the programmers. I to think extort. the parents were just concerned because they hadn't heard. Oh, I know that. So but long. and when they found out, and this is this happens uh, when people uh, get involved or affiliate with any kind of organization. It's not just unique to Unification Church. My parents were upset when I joined, but they're not upset now. Let Katie, me ask you, Mr. Hassan, do you think Catherine will ever be with her family again? I think that, that uh, I hope that she certainly will. However, the organization instills fears, irrational fears, that Satan works through the ones you love the most. That's why she was calling from the window saying, I can't get emotionally involved with the family because she's been programmed to fear it, as I've documented in my book, Combating Cult Mind Control, and many other good books She's written about okay, psychological Church's literature. Yeah. Do you think Catherine's going to be with her family again? Absolutely. It, this, this is uh, something that can be resolved, and it's something that we encourage. Why didn't you return the phone calls from her family for weeks? I was not in the office. I was on the road. Okay, gentlemen, you can continue to yeah. discuss this. Uh, I <laughs> certainly <laughs> hope you'll personally Bachman, intervene yeah. and, and, anyway. and see to it that she's sent home for a couple of months. Anyway, I think... Steve Hassan, uh, you all continue yeah, this later. Thank thanks. you both. We're back in a moment. But first, this is today on NBC.